What's up everyone? Today I'm going to show you how to get started with the Monero GUI wallet. Because remember, it's never a good idea to leave your coins on exchanges for a long period of time. Uh, just a quick intro about Monero for those of you who don't know. It's the best privacy coin in my opinion because it fits a real market need. The other major coins such as Bitcoin or Ethereum don't really offer the same functionalities. And that's why the price of Monero has shot up quite a bit in recent months. What I mean by private is that you can't see the details of a transaction like who's sending who coins and how much. I'm not going to go too much further into the tech. If you're interested about that, watch my other video on privacy coins. I also want to say that this tutorial is going to be from a perspective of an investor or a hodler. I'm not going to go for max privacy. If that's what you're looking for, you might need some different settings or processes. Finally, definitely try everything out first with a small amount. I don't want you to like throw around big amounts of Monero and potentially lose it all. So to get started, you want to go buy some Monero first, right, from the exchanges. So to find out which exchanges there are, you can go to CoinMarketCap, select Monero, and go to Markets. Here are all the different ones and the possible trading pairs. Sign up for some of those and get yourself some Monero. Next, you can go to getmonero.org slash downloads and download the client or the wallet depending on your system. So here's my Monero GUI wallet. Um, this is the landing page. I'm going to select English. And you can create a new wallet or restore wallet. I'm going to show you how to restore it later. But first, creating a new wallet. Okay, so this is the page to put in some information about your wallet. You can give it a name. Here is your seed, which is just a bunch of random words. This is very important because this will allow you to restore your wallet and access your coins, even if you lose your computer or other device. So just press next, give it a password, some random password, and press use Monero. Okay, so let's go to settings first, okay? So you can use your local host and store all your data on your local machine. But what I'm gonna do instead is to use a remote node. And that's not the best for privacy. Um, but as you can see here, if you connect to an open node over the internet, it'll save you bandwidth and disk space. So that's what I personally used. And that's, I think, fits my use case. And so you can go to Monero World and get the remote node information from here. I'm just going to copy this. Go back to my right here and change this to a 9 because that's what it said and press connect. And look, now it's connected. Any second now it should start syncing. Voila, here you go, blocks remaining. So it's gonna go, as you notice, the number is gonna go down until it's eventually zero, and then it'll say like synchronized or something. But in the meantime, I'll show you around the other parts of the wallet. Um, if you ever wanna see your seed or keys again, you can press here, it'll ask you for your password, and it'll show it to you. Once again, please keep this in a safe place that you will be able to access later. So here's your balance, um, and even if you send yourself some coins or someone else sends it to you, you're not going to see it here until you're fully synced with the latest. So let's go to the receive page first. Um, here's just an address. You can generate a payment ID if you need, and you can cycle through different ones. An integrated address, which pretty much includes your payment ID with your regular address and a QR code if people want to scan it to pay you in Monero. But usually you can just use your address or your integrated address with your exchanges to send yourself Monero. You can also send people Monero, um, put in the amount, transaction priority, default is usually good, put in their address, and these two are optional, I usually leave them blank. Um, payment ID 
is really just a way for you to keep track of like which payment is made for what. Press send and it'll ask you to confirm. And once it's confirmed, it will go into your history as pending. And eventually it will be mined um, by miners on the network and it will be assigned a block height. And the block height is kind of related to this. But basically, you just need to wait, and once it's fully synced, you'll see your balance show up, and then you can send it to other places if you'd like. There's also an advanced section. I'm not really going to go into these. I personally don't use any of these. Okay, so that's pretty much it. I hope this was helpful. If you have any further questions, please leave me a comment below, and go Monero! See you in the next one!